Bienvenido a Maputo. Bienvenido a la segunda conferencia de África. If you if you're thinking of reaching for your headphones, don't worry. That's about all the Portuguese you will hear from me today. Uh, on behalf of uh, the AFCAP management team, which includes the program manager Paul Seagull, who you met, also Katie and Emma, and my two colleagues uh, in Kuroleko and Gina on the technical management side, we would uh, like to thank the government of Mozambique the Ministry of Obrish Publicus, ANE, and of course the Road Fund for very kindly agreeing to host this conference this week. And uh, in particular, I'd like to thank uh, Deputy Minister Francisco Pereira, President of the Road Fund, Engineer Elias Paolo, and en Engineer Krishani DG of ANE, because not only have they made sure this conference has happened, but they've all three been highly supportive in establishing the AFCAP program in Mozambique, and we're very grateful to them for that. I'd also just like to mention a couple of colleagues, Carol and Helen, back in London, who many of you <laughs> probably had email contact with, and I think without their sterling efforts, we many of us wouldn't be here today. And, and also Les and Pat for kindly agreeing to facilitate the conference yet again. And as usual, your high level of organization is a, a challenge and a lesson to all of us. Finally, uh, participants, it's great to see you all safely here. Uh, we look forward to our discussions during the week. Those that I haven't met, I look forward to meeting you. And it's good to see old friends again. This is a fairly brief presentation on, on AFCAP. Many of you have been involved in the program now for three to four years. You know a lot about it and what we're doing. Some of you know more about it, parts of it than I do. This is what we're doing. We're doing research in the rural transport sector. This means expanding the knowledge base or filling, filling knowledge gaps where they may exist. Demonstration of good practice, and uh, typically this might include the construction of sections of road. This is a, a road up in uh, Manika, I think, Kenneth, or Zambezia, I'm not sure, uh, where we've, uh, the road has been constructed using our low volume sealed road design approach. We can demonstrate to communities, local politicians, practitioners, uh, what can be done. Uptake of knowledge, of course, this is critical. There's no point in doing research, demonstrating good practice if the, at the end of the day nobody uses the knowledge. So uptake is a key part of AFCAP, and one of the means of doing this is through publishing official documents. For example, the series of low-volume roads design manuals that have been now been published in Ethiopia. And finally, and the community of practice, and uh, I'm actually going to start with this because I think at the end of the day, the community of practice, which is all of us gathered here, plus m many friends and colleagues who, who couldn't make it to the conference, are, are really a key part of what we do and probably ultimately the key to the expansion and the sustainability of, of AFCAP principles. And uh, whether it's Mike Pinard on the megaphone, or Rob Pitts expounding on a theory in the, in the conference. It's getting together out in the field or in a, in a meeting like this, which, which really I think the, the benefits of AFCAP are derived. Community of practice, so this is a, it's an informal network of, of like-minded professionals in, in these days of Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn. We, we all have to be part of social networks and and we like to think that the AFCAP community of practice is developing as a social network. I'm not sure it'll ever rival Facebook, but uh, we're trying our best. Uh, the, the community of practice provides opportunities for sharing knowledge, dialogue, discussion, debate on key issues. And I think as a mechanism for expanding AFCAP approaches beyond the program, because all of us have, have wider responsibilities 
in our, in our professional lives. And the, the principles that maybe we've learned through our research in AFCAP, we can apply them in, in, in other areas on a much wider basis. What is best practice? And, and I, you know, I, I'm also an engineer, like many here. And, and sometimes I, I just think as engineers we get it wrong so often. We, we, have, we build roads that are too dusty or we can't pass them in the rains or they're very rough and, and when we get back from the field trip we have to buy a new set of tires for the vehicle. Or we go to the other extreme and we spend a million dollars a kilometre and we build a 12 metre wide, very nice uh, smooth road and with very little traffic using it. On transport services side, you know, I'm sure you agree it's not good practice for people to have to ride on the roof of a car. And these are all the challenges, and this is probably very closely linked to, to what Camilla has been saying, painting a picture of the rural transport sector in Africa where there's a lot of work to be done. So the research activities on AFCAP, and this is a summary, and there's, there are a number of other activities that aren't covered here. But what is important, what I really wanted to, to say, was that what we're doing, a lot of it is not new. And the intention is very importantly or very strongly to build on a lot of excellent work that was done in the past, going back many years, probably to the 70s or even before, done by organizations like TRL, CSIR in South Africa and, and many other agencies. <coughs> Examples of research and the classification and how can we use, um, let's call them unconventional construction materials, sands and calcretes, laterites, coral gravels. These are materials that are found abundantly in many of our countries in Africa. And yet when we look at our conventional specifications for roadworks, we can't use them. They don't comply, so we throw them away. We can't use them. We need to find ways, and we have found ways. Uh, we're improving those methods. We're improving those specifications to enable us to use these materials to the best effect in the provision of rural roads. Uh, graded aggregate seals, otter seals, quite a lot of work on how to refine this, the design methodology and the specifications, the materials we can use. We're doing some research on how to organize district maintenance. And Camilla also mentioned the, the importance of maintenance and, and, the and we all know that there's a problem with maintaining rural roads in Africa. On the transport services side, we have some research projects, understanding uh, transport needs, proving transport services, and, and this is in particular is important for access to health facilities, particular, particularly for uh, pregnant women, old age people, how do farmers get their product to the market. Uh, increasing focus on road safety, the, uh, Camilla also mentioned the alarming statistics, number of people who are killed on the roads in Africa every year. And finally, and Paul Starkey will be telling us more about this, and if you join the field group tomorrow, you'll, you'll be an expert at the end of that. This is on, we, we need to develop a, a more efficient or more effective indicators so we can monitor progress in improving transport services. Demonstration of good practice, these are some photographs, and typically, um, but not exclusively, construction of sections of road to demonstrate different techniques to show to our politicians, our decision makers, community leaders and the community and the private sector what can be done using alternative approaches. These photographs are all either I think in Tanzania or, or at Mozambique. But I just wanted to just uh, talk a little bit about this photograph because this I think is an indication, this shows how research and or de demonstration might lead to further research. I mean, what's interesting about this photograph, and this is a, a section of road in Bagomoyo in Tanzania, which has been the uh, subject of an AFCAP research project. And this section of road was impassable when it was, as soon as it rained because of black soil. We looked around and we found some very nice uh, local, naturally occurring stone. So we said, we are, on this section of road, we're going to demonstrate hand-packed stone. This is one of the recommended surfacing methods for low volume roads. But when we went back to do the monitoring, some months later, we found that 
the border border motorcycle riders don't like going on the stone surface because it's too rough, you see. And they and by the way, 90% of the traffic on the road are border border drivers. So we ask the question, and this is what research is all about: is this an is this an appropriate surfacing for this road, in particular? And you might say no, because actually this is going to cause a problem over time because the erosion <coughs> already starting to occur in that narrow path down the side where the motorbike is, is driving. So this is just to show how um, research leads to demonstration and we might learn some further lessons which then have to go back into the equation. Uptake and, and I'm also including capacity development because this is all part of um, the, the future for AFCAP. And as I said, this point is doing research and demonstration if, if these ideas are never used. Publishing of manuals, we found this to be, this is really the way forward in, in a lot of ways towards uptake of, of knowledge. These are the tools that practitioners in the government or in the private sector can use to actually design the roads. Research centers, we need to some, over time increase local research capacity in African countries. And this is um, the very ambitious project that the Ethiopian government has embarked on. Les will tell you about, all about it. We also have uh, Ato Bekele from, and Ato Alamayo from ERA here. And they'll tell you about this very exciting development of a road research center in Addis Ababa. Now, I don't think that every country will necessarily embark on such an ambitious project, but we do need to start, and this has started, we do need to continue to develop our own local research capacity in our road sector institutions. Finally, training. And uh, I think this was a training course, and we've had a number of similar courses over the years under AFCAP. This, this one would have been, I think, in Shimoyo, Mozambique, training of Mozambican contractors. So in summary, AFCAP is building on previous research, also generating new knowledge, demonstrating best practice in various ways, including construction of trial sections, Institutional, institutionalizing knowledge and best practice through publishing official documents, supporting the establishment of local research centers, and also training. And then finally, the community practice is a powerful tool for growth. This, these are photographs from Addis Ababa 2010, November. And uh, <clears throat> we don't have, unfortunately, we don't have Charles Overby here to have an argument with Kenneth about the design of water seals. But I'm, I'm sure engineers Manesh and Letta will be on top form at the social event tomorrow night. Thank you very much. Thanks, Prof.